Hi everyone, this is Mauricio. I'm in charge of blockchain services in IBM Latin America. I'm joined today by Marie Wick. She's the global manager for blockchain here at IBM. Today we're going to talk a little bit about blockchain. Uh, the first topic we want to tackle is the industry momentum. Marie, how do you see the industry around the globe as, as much as you've seen uh, now in Latin America? How is that compared? So worldwide, we're seeing tremendous interest in blockchain, and I really haven't seen this much potential for a new technology uh, since the early days of the internet and e-business. And especially here in Latin America, we're always excited by the innovation and the unique use cases that we're seeing. And as a result, we're really investing here locally to help our clients and our partners in the ecosystem with a new expansion to our blockchain solution hub. We just launched this week the blockchain, IBM blockchain platform on the local IBM cloud here so that you have access locally in country. And it is the enterprise ready, most secure enterprise grade platform for a full life cycle, everything you want to do in a blockchain solution. We're also expanding our hub with more skills and capacity and are launching our IBM Garage. And the Garage is really key to get clients started in a way that we've learned actually gets them to successful networks very quickly. Looking not just at the technology, but bringing all of the key participants into a minimum viable ecosystem so they can really get moving. So that combination with the innovation we see here, I think is going to be tremendous. Awesome. Yeah, there are a lot, lots of opportunities uh, we, we're seeing across all the industries. Uh, financial services is a prime industry for blockchain, as much as insurance, uh, healthcare, and supply chain. I mean, supply chain is also a prime industry for the use cases, and we encourage uh, everyone in Latin America to check out what we have uh, in our IBM platform. I would also say, just to add to that, we're doing a lot just not only in Latin America, but in linkage back to worldwide. You mentioned yep. food safety and food trust. We're tracing with Walmart food from Latin America and driving that back in terms of visibility for trusted transactions and safe food distribution. We're doing work around global trade for shipping and shipping in and out of the region and working with ports and authorities as well. Right. So not just financial services where we see the biggest momentum, but industrial, mining, supply chain, food safety, agriculture, all are seeing a lot of real interest here and connected to networks globally. Indeed, so Latin America being a primarily export uh, countries will get the most benefit from engaging in global networks for export for sure. Absolutely. So in terms of IBM, uh, you mentioned uh, our recent uh, announcement of the IBM blockchain platform here in Latin America. How are we uh, stacking talent to deliver the value of blockchain to our clients? Well, you have a unique location here in Brazil that we have IBM Development Lab, you have IBM Research, we have key skills across the industries in global services, you've got a technology center, and now in combination with design skills and the garage and the blockchain platform hub, that combination really has soup to nuts the expertise you need on the business side, on the business case and value proposition, as well as on the technology side. And we're continuing to look at the demand and we'll continue to scale to that demand to make sure we're meeting the needs of the local team. I might be wrong and biased, but I think IBM is the only technology provider in the whole Latin America that has actual use cases being uh, worked in blockchain, right? So I think uh, the clients are more than encouraged to see and talk to us about uh, what we can do for them in Latin America. And it's not just Latin America. We're leveraging the 1,600 people we have worldwide on blockchain. We're also leveraging the platform and the resources that come from those locations. We've had 400 client engagements. We have almost 2,000 networks running on our platform. And IBM itself was the first company to drive our own production blockchain network. That was back in 2016. So we've taken all the lessons learned in driving real production networks. We have over 50 active networks now. And I don't think anyone else can say that about delivering enterprise That's value. That's true. 
Now, in that regard, I mean, we've seen a lot of misconceptions and myths around blockchain. I think now everybody knows that blockchain for enterprise is not exactly the same of whatever crypto whatevers we have seen. So what are the top three things we, uh, we've seen and now we have already dismissed as these myths with our clients? Well, you know, certainly the first one is always around cryptocurrency. And when you hear blockchain, most people think Bitcoin or one of the 1,100 other cryptocurrencies that are out there. We believe that it's much more not about anonymous transactions on a public network, but about enterprise grade transactions with trusted participants where you know who you're dealing with. So I think myth number one is permissioned is not the same as private. We are very much advocates of permission networks, but we really see that as an opportunity to have trusted relationships and the identity that's required behind it. So we're doing a lot of work with partners like SecureKey, with our work with Sovereign on identity standards mm -hmm. so everyone can participate in a known network. I think the second one that we hear is cryptocurrencies and mining, which we don't need in our blockchain versus tokens. And we do see demand for tokens. There's a five to 10x expected growth in the token economy over the next several years. And we are participating with that. We've done projects with um, not only the Stellar Foundation and what they are doing in terms of trade and cross-border payments. We've been working with Sovereign on the identity standards. We're working with tokens directly on platform, um, including Car eWallet and uh, Viridium, all doing token exchanges with various asset-backed tokens. So we think that's an important distinction. Having real asset-backed value versus a cryptocurrency can mean a big difference. That's true. That's true. And the last one I would say is on open source. And not all open source is created equal. Um, we are firm believers in the need for open source to establish new technologies and to make those standards across the world. Um, but we think that that only goes well when there's also open governance and an open licensing model for that use. And while we started on Ethereum, we decided to move to the Hyperledger project because of a number of key things. We are really supportive of the licensing model that they have, which is not GPL. We really see broad community support with now over 235 participants that are engaged in a governance process that lets people accept requirements and also put back their own contributions. And we now have over 500 contributors into 10 different projects right now. Um, but we also think it's really important that it is open governed. And there are many open source projects out there, but they are almost exclusively being contributed to by whoever contributed the initial code. They're basically founder led by a company. And that doesn't strike me as being open. When you really think about what technology you're using, think about those things, the governance model, how open is it really, where would you get support, and who else is participating so that you get the best innovation in the market. So beware of the open sources that don't have that degree of openness, right? Yes. So to wrap it up, I mean, we, we, we talked about um, how blockchain is evolving and bringing the best business opportunities across industries. So you said before, this is a team sport. Correct. So let's wrap it up. I think we encourage uh, everyone that is interested in blockchain to not only partner with a technology provider, to your case, but look into your industries, look across your competitors if that's the case, because that's potentially where the biggest opportunities lie. Correct. All right. So business and technology partnership, competitors and friends within your industry, and looking at industry adjacencies, whether that's trade, with finance, with supply chain, all of those things really can expand the total value that we're seeing. Awesome. So we're gonna wrap it up. This was Marie Week. I'm Mauricio Magaldi. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.